What's going on everybody? Simple back at it like I'm checking my height. Today we are checking out a video that talks about how the Netherlands helped America gain independence. I'm sure you guys will be more than willing to pick this whole video apart. So let me know what is right, what is wrong down in the comments below as we go through this. I'm sure I'll have questions. Um, my memory is absolutely horrible from a car accident uh, a while back. So it's tough to remember things. It's tough to build new memories. So bear with me as we go through some history and stuff i love learning about things though it just sometimes doesn't stick to the wall when they throw it so you gotta throw it multiple times um shout out to eric for this one if you guys want to see some more content like this or anything else make sure you check out the google form down in the description below definitely make sure you check out the creator consortium link let's go this isn't a history channel but as english explorer captain john smith once wrote geography without history seem with a carcass without motion hmm. but before Fair i enough. get into the story i'm about to tell I if like you were that. new to the if you are new to the channel, welcome. On this channel, Thank I you. talk about a variety of geography related topics on whatever I'm interested in at the moment. Fair I enough. I have quite a few history videos planned for this summer, such as what's left of the Dutch in New York City, a lot of old map videos, and a few on America's attempts at exterminating their wildlife. So if these are topics Jeez. that interest you as well, hit the beavers? subscribe button and hit the bell if you want to get notifications on new uploads. Now let's go ahead and get started. If you know more than a little about the American Revolution, you know that France played an important role in America's victory for independence by providing money, men, and material. But there is another lesser known contributor to the United States victory, the Netherlands. Its official name at the time was the Republic of the Seven United Netherlands, also commonly known as the Dutch Republic. This is the predecessor right. state of modern day Netherlands, though at the time this also included parts of modern day Belgium. Now, the Netherlands wasn't officially an ally of the United States, nor did they support the United States with soldiers, both of which probably contributes to why they are often forgotten. Great Britain actually saw the Netherlands as an ally of theirs at the beginning of the revolution, but the Netherlands officially declared themselves neutral in the war. What the Netherlands was more interested in than a U.S. victory was making money, and they weren't too concerned with who they were making the money from, but by the end of the war, the United States and the Dutch Republic would have a common enemy. This is how the Dutch would support the war effort, trade. Before I go further, let me first provide some context. At the time of the American Revolution, though slowly declining in power by the 18th century, the Netherlands was a global leader in trade, controlling territories India? across the globe and a worldwide network of seafaring trade routes. Historians and economists debate on what exactly <clears throat> drove this small nation of only about 16,000 square miles or 42,000 square kilometers to become such a power. But historically, the Netherlands have accepted a high number of immigrants, which often brought with them skills and capital that could be reinvested. The country's inhabitants have also historically had a hard work ethic that emphasizes efficiency, which many historians say is rooted in its Calvinist past. But its rise to becoming painting. a great seafaring nation is also rooted in the Netherlands' physical geography. This is a coastal country, lies extremely low in elevation, and is essentially one giant river delta. I would like to correct you right there. It, it might be considered a coastal country, but that is an Atlantean country. Just saying. Which has made it prone to flooding. I actually made a whole video on how the Dutch have adapted to its geography. Atlanteans. If you want to check that out, I've left a link in the comments below. Dutch Atlanteans. Water and the terrain shaped by it is why the country rides Dutch bikes, Lanteans. grows tulips, and has oh, hundreds that was so of cool. windmills. But water didn't just shape <clears throat> culture within its mainland borders. Shout out the to The physical my Dutch geography Lanteans. combined with the aforementioned cultural characteristics of the Netherlands turned the Dutch into expert and efficient shipbuilders and motivated its population to seek trade opportunities across the globe. And one of those places was the 13 colonies. Tensions began rising in the American colonies following the French and Indian War in 1763. The British launched a series of acts that raised taxes on the colonists in order to pay for the war because the British felt that the colonists caused the war so they should provide payment for the protection that Great Britain had provided. And we said F that. The colonists weren't happy about it. We were not. Protests erupted. And in 1770, British soldiers opened fire on a mob of like angry colonists, there, killing at least five men and wounding several more in what is known as the Boston Massacre. Then in yes. December of 1773, a band of Bostonians dressed as Mohawk Indians in protest on the taxation, boarded British ships and dumped 342 chests of tea into Boston Harbor. The event is known as the Boston Tea Party. The British Parliament responded with what the colonists refer to as the Intolerable Acts. This brought Massachusetts under full control of the British government and allowed British loyalists in the colony to be tried in Great Britain. 
George Washington called this the Murder Act because he said it allowed British officials to harass colonists and then flee to Great Britain to escape justice. The act also allowed British soldiers to be housed wherever necessary, including private homes, though some historians say the act only meant unoccupied buildings. Great Britain had attempted to isolate yeah, extremists in say. Massachusetts with these acts, but it backfired, and other colonies pledged to support Massachusetts if there was an attack by the British. The colonists prepared for war. The British, for obvious reasons, refused to sell arms and ammunition to the American colonists, and they banned other countries from doing so as well. In 1774, Britain declared the export of war materials to the colonies to be illegal, and therefore subject to search and seizure. And this is where the Dutch entered the picture, because the Dutch didn't care. Dutch merchants Thank continue you. to trade wherever and whenever possible. The British Lieutenant Governor of New York warned London in November of- I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on between the Dutch and England, but I don't know where in the timeline between this and that. Was that later on down the road? It must have been later on down the road, right? Oh, I can't remember. 1774 is Someone that. let me know in the comments. Contraband between this place and Holland prevails to an enormous degree. Actions must be taken against the smugglers, but it would not be easy. The vessels from Holland or St. Eustatia do not come into this port, but in the numerous bays and creeks that our coasts and rivers furnish, on which the contraband is sent up through small boats. The British were furious oh. that... furnish on which the contraband is sent up through small boats the there. british were furious that the dutch continued to ignore the ban they then made a strong request to the netherlands to stop all war Didn't materials from enough. being shipped to the american colonies penalties included confiscation of materials large fines and the confiscation of ships if not paid conscious of not being able to go head to head with the british navy the british had 100 warships compared to the netherlands 11 the government of the netherlands officially decided to comply but the Dutch merchant class wasn't happy with their government's decision, and they just continued to ignore the British request. So the British then responded with more search and seizures around St. Eustatius, the hub for this arms and ammunition trade. Hmm. Once the war had officially begun with the battles of Lexington and Concord in April of 1775, the Dutch ammunition trade to the Americans got so bad that King George III in January 1776 ordered more warships on duty around the Caribbean. He stated, Every intelligence confirms that principally St. Eustatius, but also all the other islands, are to furnish the Americans with gunpowder this winter. But many of the Dutch traders continue to find ways to evade the British. Wow. More obstacles arose with the defeat of the Americans at Long Island, which left America completely without the ports of New York and later Philadelphia. Though the two largest ports were occupied by the British, the Dutch were again not a group to give up on this lucrative trade, and they continued smuggling through smaller ports and estuaries. In 1776, the Dutch Republic made a half-hearted effort to comply with the continued requests from the British. They replaced St. Eustatius' governor with a new man, named Johannes de Graaf. After the British complained that his predecessor was allowing merchants to continue to ship war materials to the Americans. But on the 16th of November, 1776, the American Navy ship USS Andrew Doria, with the American Declaration of Independence on board, arrived in St. Eustatius. Its captain fired a salute to the Dutch flag on Fort Orange, and the governor, Johannes de Graaf, decided to answer the salute with 11 gunshots. And so the United States of America were for the first time recognized as a nation by another. Boom. So now, not only were the Dutch preventing the Americans from running out of ammunition, allowing the revolution to continue, they had now recognized the British colony as a sovereign nation. On top of this, the Netherlands was actually supposed to have provided 6,000 troops to the British for the war, as was the terms of a past treaty. In 1778, when hmm. France was persuaded to join in the fight against the British, the Dutch That's traded with them as well. But with the French, they traded mostly naval stores. The French needed supplies for their naval construction, but were unable to obtain them themselves due to the blockade of the Royal Navy. So they turned to the Dutch, who were privileged by a concession obtained after their victory in the Second Anglo-Dutch War, known as the principle of free ship, free goods, which was okay. enshrined in the Anglo-Dutch Commercial Treaty of 1668. According to the treaty, naval stores were not considered contraband, as long as the Dutch remained neutral, which the Dutch claimed they were. But of course, the British just declared naval stores illegal and started arresting Dutch ships. Which is and as always, Dutch merchants continued to evade the British. The Dutch British were- You guys just keep evading everybody. What's up with that? What- what part of what part of Dutch history does that come from? 
relationship became more hostile on the 31st of December, 1779, when the two countries it's, had a brief I mean, naval engagement. We wouldn't be who we are the without British it, wished though, to right? inspect so, Dutch ships for what they considered contraband destined for, for France. Good. The Dutch initially Thanks. refused and threatened the British with force before finally backing down. The event caused the Dutch to pursue joining the League of Armed Neutrality, which was an alliance of European naval powers which was intended to protect neutral shipping against the Royal Navy's wartime policy of unlimited searches. The British government saw this move as a threat, and it could potentially embroil Great Britain in a war with its other members, Russia, Sweden, and Denmark-Norway. They had finally had enough. Great Britain officially declared war on the Dutch Republic, and they began attacking their former allies' colonial economic interests, including St. Eustatius, in what was known as the Fourth Anglo-Dutch War. One head-to-head -head naval battle did take place, the Battle of Dogger Bank. Both sides took hundreds of casualties. Tactically, the battle was a draw, but it was a strategic victory for the British. The Dutch did not have the naval strength to continue going head-to-head -head with the British. This allowed the British to continue their oppression against the Dutch merchants. Though the Dutch colonial empire had already been slowly declining, so what's this settled comes along, and cemented Great Britain as the new leading commercial power. Navies around Though the, the world. Netherlands' economic self-interest were a large motivator for the support of the American Revolution, Dutch citizens, probably more so than the Dutch government, became more sympathetic to the American cause as the war progressed. Both countries were being bullied by the same global power and some sympathy may have come from the Netherlands having fought for their own independence in the 16th and 17th centuries. Whatever the motivation was, the United States will always be grateful for their support. Historian Absolutely. Barbara Tuckman claims that it's possible that the grateful American Revolution would not have survived without us. the Dutch ignoring the ban on war materials and successfully evading the British. On February 27, 1939, President Franklin D. Roosevelt presented a plaque to St. Eustatius. Mounted on the flagpole inside Fort Orange, it reads, In commemoration of the salute to the flag of the United States, fired in this fort on 16 November 1776, by order of Johannes de Graaf, Governor of St. Eustatius, in reply to a national gun salute fired by the U.S. Brig of War, Andrew Doria. Here, the sovereignty of the United States was first formally acknowledged to a national vessel by a foreign official. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more geography videos. It's really cool. Thank you for watching. It's amazing finding out the little pieces of history that aren't always told and taught through textbooks in school and stuff like that. Um, I really enjoyed this video. I hope you guys did as well. If you did, make sure you head on over to the Content Creators channel. Show them some support over there. Um, don't forget to hit me with a like if you did. If you didn't, it's all love. I appreciate you guys for stopping by. Anyway, make sure you smash the crap out of that thumbs down button. Hit up one of the other two videos. I guess I'll hit my microphone. I'll catch you on the next one.